Original J-boats raced for three cups before the Second World War saw their demise. But in recent years, they've been revived by wealthy owners with a passion not just for history, but for winning in a Grand Prix class like no other. Watching you, Jim. The original heyday of the J-Class was the 1930s, but in recent years, the class has been revived. Here at the Super Yacht Cup in Mallorca, Spain, there are a fleet of them racing, and the competition is as fierce as it was when these huge radical boats battled for the America's Cup. It's quite a sight, five Js lined up, and they look a bit like they would in the 1930s, but on board, it's pretty different. There's carbon rigs, carbon rigging, carbon sail, it's all new and very state-of-the-art. But it's something else. I fell in love with the, with the first of the looks of the boat and then once you start sailing and racing it, it becomes, a, you know, an addictive. You mustn't be aware of the money because then you don't, you must forget it because you must be a little bit crazy to do this. <laughs> It's the beauty of the boats themselves. There's a great history behind them. All that adds a little bit to the magic of, um, of the J-Class. There were only 10 Js originally built. One of these, Volshida, is racing here in Palma. The other four are replicas based on the 1930s designs. J-Class technology was at the cutting edge of the time. Everything was big, 17-storey mass carrying vast sail areas, narrow hulls and massive loads. They were built to win the America's Cup. The Jays of today have been upgraded with modern materials, and they're powered by professional crews, a who's who of Grand Prix sailing, America's Cup winners, and offshore racing veterans. Men like Bayer Becking, who will soon set sail on his seventh Volvo Ocean race. They're just magnificent uh, to see off the water and they're actually a lot of fun to sail on the water as well. So much technical aspects are involved, huge teamwork, so I think a better racing you nearly can't have. We do wheel them around as if they were little dinghies, but all of a sudden you realize after you've turned the wheel about 15 times and it's not going anywhere yet, oof, we might have put ourselves in a tough spot. It's kind of a miracle that, that there hasn't been a pretty good pileup up to now and, you know, knock on wood that, that it doesn't happen here, but they're hard boats to sail. U.S. star Ken Reed is skipper of Hanneman, a replica of the original J Endeavour II. It's owned by Jim Clark, the founder of Netscape. He's not only a pioneer in the IT industry, but his investment in the modern J-Class has also helped create the successful and competitive racing fleet that exists today. You could have had any boat raced in, in any kind of class. Why a J? I mean, had it, had it always been a childhood dream? I didn't start sailing until I was in my 30s, but um, I chartered Endeavour many years ago, and I always remembered what a nice experience it was. And so when it occurred to me that I might build one, for my taste, Endeavour 2 looked like one of the most beautiful ones, so I decided to build that. I was pretty naive. It never occurred to me it would take 30 people to sail it uh, in a race. Clark persuaded the J-Class Association to allow him to build Hanneman in aluminium. He had to clear this with the owners of Volshida and also Ranger, the first replica, as both are built in steel. This was the last steel boat, and all the other new J-boats are aluminum. Much lighter, much faster, and so it means that we have to work that much harder on uh, making Ranger uh, go. Have you ever had any moments where you thought, what, you know, what, have I been, what am I doing with this? Well, every once in a while I'll say, well, gosh, I'd like to sell this boat and build another one. Uh, knowing what I know now. And maybe one of these days I'll do that, you never can tell. <laughs> There's a handicap system to make sure that neither Ranger nor Volshida are disadvantaged by their weighty steel hulls. But when racing is on, those details are forgotten. Go, go, go! Go! Good start, everybody. Go, Ranger. 
Get it in. Let's go, boys. So close together, I wasn't really expecting that. There's this real intensity on board, it's, it's neck and neck. Despite the light winds, the real estate entrepreneur and his Kiwi skipper Earl Williams are at the front of the fleet, with the kind of pace that the original Rangers showed when winning the 1937 America's Cup. Aren't you a bit nervous when it's so close? Mm -hmm. No, because they're behind us. <laughs> I'm nervous when they're ahead of us. And as if to prove that a heavier steel hull doesn't preclude Ranger from seeing off the rest of the fleet, she takes the line first for a spectacular win. Yeah, go Ranger! <laughs> go Steel! It's a bit of a dark horse. You told me we wouldn't do very well today. No, it, wasn't, it wasn't our we're conditions. Big, no, we're big, we're fat, and we're old. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good so, day. It doesn't get better than that. So every once in a while, the fat lady sings. But the celebration is short-lived. Lionheart's Bauer Becking has lodged an appeal against Ranger for cutting them up at the first bottom mark. If we would have done our normal turn, I'm 100% sure we would have hit them. They took the penalty because otherwise probably they would have had a DSQ. No one's giving an inch? Nobody's giving a centimetre. <laughs> Ranger relegated down the order. No question, the racing is intense. But it's more than that. The Jays are an echo of the past of the beautiful boats that raced for the oldest trophy in sport back in the 1930s. The J-Class are perhaps the most emotive racing yachts ever built. And 80 years after the first design was drawn, five of them are racing in Mallorca modern versions of the original technological marvels that raced for the America's Cup. Just as the modern day cup sees influential men lock horns in a battle of technology, foiling catamarans driving up top speeds in excitement, so it was in the era of the Jays. It began when British tea magnate Sir Thomas Lipton challenged for the cup in 1930 for his fifth and final time with the J Shamrock 5, built at the then mighty cost of a million pounds. The Americans responded by building four boats at the height of the Great Depression, and it was railway tycoon Harold Vanderbilt who won the right to defend the cup, where his J Enterprise saw off Lipton's Shamrock four races to zero. And that happened right here off the waters of Newport, Rhode Island. The Jays racing for the America's Cup, the USA versus Great Britain. Newport is the waterside home of the New York Yacht Club, which defended the Cup so vigorously for the first century of its existence. It is also home to property developer Elizabeth Meyer, who revived the J-Class in the 1980s. Elizabeth doesn't see the vast resources lavished on these boats during the Depression as excessive, but instead admires men like aviation pioneer Sir Thomas Sopwith, who built the British Challengers for the next two cups. These things were an exemplar of what people could do, and nobody for a moment thought that they were other than um, a fantastic employment opportunity for a lot of craftsmen. When someone like Tom Sopwith builds Endeavor, he's a patron of the arts, the magnificent industrialist. And look what he did. Endeavor is a part of a fantastic, very high level industrial design. Despite Sopwith's effort, Endeavor failed to defeat Vanderbilt's Rainbow in 1934. But three years later, he was back in Newport with Endeavor too. It was to be the last time the Jays would battle for the cup, and once again Vanderbilt triumphed, this time with Ranger. But the Second World War brought the end for these majestic racing machines, scrapped or abandoned, until in 1984, Elizabeth visited England and was sailing aboard the only Jay then afloat, Volshida, when she saw the hull of Endeavour on a mudflat on Southampton Water. 
She was out of the water and seeing a jay out of the water is really amazing because they're so sculptural and beautiful. And I thought, someone really ought to restore this, I will. And then I immediately went, oh no, because I knew that I would do it. Elizabeth embarked on a project that she could barely afford, selling assets to fund the work. She felt a faithful restoration of Sir Thomas Sopwith's endeavor was her duty. It was a massive struggle as she restored the boat first in the UK and then in Holland. But finally, in 1989, Endeavour was relaunched. We raised sail and I took the helm. And of course I was just feeling her. And I went, oh, phew. Because she was the greatest boat to steer I've ever steered in my life, ever. Elizabeth had also helped find funding for the other surviving J, Shamrock 5, to be restored. And in September 89, the Jays were in Newport for the first time since the 1930s, with CNN founder and 1977 America's Cup winner Ted Turner alongside her. I've got a hard over. Racing against his winning tactician, Gary Jobson. Right now I'm doing over 10 knots, and uh, the wind is only blowing about eight, so I'm going two knots faster than the wind is blowing, which is uh, highly unusual. 25 years on and five boats are racing together here in Mallorca for replicas and this boat, Volshida, lovingly restored from the original hull. Owner Ronald Duval has recently upgraded Volshida to compete with the faster replicas, but this is nothing compared to the initial rebuild he carried out in the 1990s. It was just like a rusty hull. There wasn't even a deck on it anymore. So my wife said I was crazy to buy something like that, you know, of course. But we did, and, uh, you know, I think we had a good example from Elizabeth how a boat like that would look, and, and I think that part of it, at least for me, was enjoyable to build the boat and to go through that whole process, because it is a big process. It hasn't been a great week for Valshida so far in Palma, but experienced crew boss Justin Juggy Kluwer, round the world race winner and America's Cup bowman, brings an intensity to the pre-race briefing. Okay guys, just going out there today, it's a lot of effort and you just got to keep digging in and putting that effort in. All hands, fingernails, bleeding. I'm pumped up, you can tell, can't you? Three, two, one, and we're off. Normal set. Keep going, you're going nicely. And hoist. Quick drive guys, quick drive, okay? Watch the jibs down. I want to clear the drive, OK? It's all action on the foredeck. There was a tack, there was a hoist, there was a jive. Look at everybody go. Ultimately, with their instruments not working and therefore tactics tricky to judge, Valshida's hard graft isn't enough on the day. They have to settle for last place. The Hydra is blind at the moment. We're not going to give tiger, in, I mean. or we'll not give in. <laughs> Today was not our sunny side, no, unfortunately. We worked hard, tried hard, but uh, we were you know, clearly behind, so there's a lot to improve, and it's not like we're totally uh, desperate. So we will be back, we will be back. Leading the charge is Hanneman, who after a disappointing previous day, takes the win ahead of Ranger. We were gonna be fast off the line if it killed me. I don't care if we mowed anybody down, we were gonna be fast off the starting line. We were fast off the line today. There's a thing called the Vanderbilt start, and essentially you start from way away from the line and you just wind it up and hope like hell you're on time. These boats were Vanderbilt boats, you know, and, and that's where the start came from. You gotta commit with almost two minutes to go. And um, yesterday we did not commit at the right time. Today we committed at a much better time. Hanneman and Ranger are still in the frame for the overall title, but the boat at the top of the leaderboard is Lionheart. In the J-Class, you never know what's, what's going to happen because we know the scores are, are yeah, very, very close. We are in the lead, so uh, it's, uh, it's always one point off from the rest, so we just have to take it by the day. Aboard his 90-metre superyacht Athena, Hanneman owner Jim Clark entertains the other owners and their 30-strong crews. Friends tonight, back to battle in the morning.
The J-Class, in many people's eyes, are the most beautiful yachts ever to have raced for the America's Cup, perhaps even ever built. Their significance in the history of sailing was marked at the 150th anniversary of the America's Cup on the Isle of Wight in 2001, when all three surviving Jays, Shamrock 5, Endeavour and Volshida, were at the centre of those celebrations. Today in Palma, only Volshida is racing, up against four replicas built in the years that followed. It's an incredible spectacle, but for restoration purists, the Jays here aren't the boats that raced in the 1930s. I regret, actually, the direction the J class has gone, because I think that it has led people away from what should be the restoration in the classic yacht scene. They all have to race a spirited tradition boats, which is, in fact, what they are. The only one now that is a classic still is Shamrock and the Jays have gone off in the wrong direction. But Elizabeth Meyer sold her Jay Endeavour in 2000. Today's owners want their exclusive 1930s designs, upgraded with the very latest materials and technology to produce the ultimate racing fleet. Endeavour was Elizabeth's passion, and uh, it's been in and out of the, the racing. But I think it's a tribute to Ron, the owner of Belshita, and John, the owner of, of Ranger. The, the two of them put j racing back in, in the limelight. These boats are as much modern as they can be. The big difference is the underbody shape and the weight. They're only gonna go so fast through the water, 12 and a half knots or so. That's the antique part, is the shape. But beyond that, it's an all-out race boat. The Jay's incredible blend of history and modernity is attracting new owners. Eric Bilesman has had great success with his mini J Firefly in the super yacht fleet, but he's now upscaling to the real thing. And there are other Jays in build. The class looks healthy. It's set to grow beyond the five boats racing in Palma. And so to the final race. Lionheart holds a narrow lead. But with TomTom Tom founder Harold Godgen helming himself against some experienced professional skippers, he needs to navigate a solid result. We like to win, but at the same time, what makes it exciting is that it's so close, so everybody can win. And if you want that kind of uh, recipe, you need to be able to lose as well at some point. But we're working hard and we would like to win today. But he's cool as ice. He's just, he's so relaxed and uh, he puts a lot of trust in the team. It's always that thing, of course he likes to win, but I think the fun is always uh, the most important thing for him. What will you say to him before that pre-start? Let's kick ass. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Punchy talk, but Becking is unlikely to have it all his own way. Hanneman's two times Volvo Ocean Race skipper won't give up the title they won last year without a fight. It looks like there's three boats that can really win the regatta between Lionheart and ourselves and, and, um, and Ranger. There looks to be one point uh, between the three. We've got to make sure that we got our act together and come up with a plan. Go, guys, go, go, go. Trimming on, guys, trimming, trimming, trimming. Can we go before Velshina then? Here we go, guys. Go, guys, go, go, go. Yeah, I'm trying. We're just heading down and down and down. We're down 15 here. Well, not where Kenny wanted to be. We're slightly trailing the fleet after a difficult start, but we're pulling them in quickly. Here we go, guys. Get ready to jive. And go! Yeah, just all these guys create such a big wake. I've tried to get up here to get out of it, and you just can't. A frustrating day. A bad start cost Hanneman dear. Fourth on the day means they have to settle for third overall. It's been an incredible roller coaster of a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like two wins and two fourths. You know, that's that's un that shows how tight this class is. That's the price you pay for being behind. You are dictated by others and deserve what we get. <laughs> Up ahead is Lionheart, an emphatic victory that secures them the overall title. Abba, you told me this morning you were going to go out and, and show them what you got. Kick some pretty, butt. Yeah, <laughs> kick some butt. It was a pretty impressive day. 
Yeah, it was a fantastic day. It was quite long as well. So our owner did a fantastic job today. Uh, all the credit to him. He had a good start and, uh, and then we, somebody let us off the hook and it was game over and just controlling. So it, it was actually in the end an easy regatta. For Becking, it's straight back to his Volvo Ocean Race boat to prepare for the October start, leaving Godgen and Lionheart to celebrate. There's no question it's every sailor's dream to race a jay, a must do. And to see these boats racing hard in all their glory is impressive. The scale, the brutal physicality, the history, the romance, all draws us in. But perhaps the attraction is simpler than that. They just look right. I think there's something about the Jays that is representational of the ultimate sailboat. So it's long and low, it has fantastic shear, it's really deep. It has a really tall mass. It's a sloop, a cutter. And they look like the meaning of sailboat. Elizabeth Meyer paved the way for the return of the Jays. And though for her, the electronic winches, carbon fiber sails, and aluminum hulls sit uncomfortably, the modern owner wants a race boat that embraces current technology and can win on the water. The original America's Cup pioneers of the 1930s built the most advanced machines then possible in order to win. Today's owners are also innovators and have found their own definition of perfection. Arguably the most beautiful sailboats ever made are the J-boats. So here you are racing a small fleet of these things. This is, you know, pretty compelling. Nothing quite like it.